Hey, what's up everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about three ways that fear holds mortgage pros back from achieving their dreams, from living their best life, the abundant life, the freedom life, and most importantly, how to avoid it, how to steer clear from those fear landmines so that you can earn more while working less, have more fun, flow, and fulfillment. That's really what it's all about. That's what we're all about here on Planet Prosper. Earning more while working less, while having more fun, freedom, and fulfillment, and getting out of fear and into faith. So let me define fear for a moment, just for the uninitiated. Fear equals false evidence appearing real. Or on the flip side, F everything and run, depending on how you look at it. But fear is the only thing that the closer you move towards something you fear, the smaller it becomes, unless you're on the edge of a cliff. And obviously that's healthy fear, because if you go over that cliff, you're going to go splat. That will not bode well. So there's healthy fear. There's unhealthy fear. But if it's unhealthy fear, it's keeping you back from taking action. So that kind of fear is either false evidence appearing real. You're believing some BS lie and believing it to be true, even though it's not true. Or... You're putting your tail between your legs and you're saying F everything and run, right? You're just freaking out because you either believe it as a force that is actually the current of average. You need to, just like in a river, you're swimming against that current of average. So fear is the current of average. Fear is that current of average that you have to swim against. You actually have to move towards that which you fear. If you're afraid of public speaking, but you want to be a public speaker, you want to be an orator, you've got to feel the fear and do it anyways. If you want to be a great leader and you're concerned about what people think, you're going to have to feel the fear and do it anyways. Make decisions in spite of the fact that not everyone's going to like you all the time. If you want to be a champion level boxer, but you're afraid of getting punched in the face, you're going to have to feel that fear and do it anyways. Because all of those things are par for the course. That fear is the current that you have to swim against. And that fear is the only thing in the universe that gets smaller the more purposefully and intentionally you move towards it. You feel the fear. You do it anyways because you're more committed to your dream than you are your comfort zone. So you feel the fear and do it anyways because you're more committed to conquer than you are coddling your comfort zone. So Fear in that context is false evidence appearing real. Now, here are three ways that fear hold us back, that fear holds us back from our dream, from living the best life, the abundant life. The first is fear only cares about surviving, not thriving. Fear doesn't give a rip, right? It doesn't give a rip about living an abundant life on purpose, with purpose, making freedom money, taking the kids to Disney World for first class and five star. Fear doesn't give a rip about being able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want. Fear doesn't give a rip about being able to buy your parents a house or to be able to pay off their mortgage or to be able to buy mom or dad a new car or to be able to stroke checks to worthy causes that bring tears of joy to people's eyes and not even being able to not even have to skip a, a beat financially because you have that kind of means to be able to do that and not even bat an eye. Fear doesn't give a rip about you spreading your wings and soaring to new heights. All fear cares about is you protecting yourself from the once bitten twice shy, from making a mistake you might regret, from you know any kind of potential ill or any kind of potential negative consequence. Fear is always in protection mode. It's always in conservation mode. It's always trying to prevent from loss, prevent from pain, prevent from something we might regret. So fear really doesn't give a rip about you becoming a champion, you becoming the best version of yourself, you living a life of purpose with prosperity. All fear cares about is self-preservation and self-protection. It cares about surviving, not thriving. And I remember coming up as an entrepreneur, fear would eat away at me a lot because I'm, I had too much month at the end of the money. I'm freaking out because I'm feeling inadequate. I have imposter syndrome. So I'm already in my heart feeling this corrosion 
of my peace because I already have a fear within my own soul around me not being enough, me not measuring up because my belief was that my value is in my performance. Perhaps you can relate. My value is in my performance. My value is in how much money I make and my value is in how productive I am. My value is in my achievements. And you can imagine when your value is in your achievements and how much money you make, you're in a very precarious position because you're always fearful. You're always running away from the bear that's breathing down your neck that I'm not doing enough. I need to do more. What happens if I slide down the mountain? Sure, I might get to the top of the mountain, but what happens if I slide down the other side? There's always that fear that is chasing you down like a Kodiak grizzly breathing down your neck. And so I was always white knuckling and grinding and a workaholic because I was afraid that if I didn't perform, then I wouldn't be enough, then I'd be a fraud, that I wouldn't, then I wouldn't be anybody, I wouldn't be a somebody, that I would be inadequate. And so that fear kept me grinding and grinding on the guinea pig wheel. And that fear didn't give a rip about my peace, my joy, my prosperity. All that fear cared about is keeping myself from the bear that was breathing down my neck, that was chasing me down. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And meanwhile, my joy and my peace is being sapped from me every day. So that fear was literally keeping me in a prison of my own making. And that fear had me perpetually and continually fighting against myself, having a war within myself because I kept pouring gasoline on the fear of my inadequacy. And as I remained in this guinea pig wheel, this cul-de-sac of fear, it kept feeding the fear. It kept feeding the monster that wanted to eat me for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Perhaps you can relate because it's a no win scenario because the more I'm run by fear, ruled by fear, towed around by the nose by fear, I remain in the shackles of fear and my power and my peace and my purpose is being withheld because I'm not showing up in faith, I'm showing up in fear. It's not having my superpower self show up, it's having my chump self show up, not my champion self, my chump self, not my winner self, my wimp self. And that version of me is never gonna create my dream, nor is it gonna produce the best results, right? When I'm living in fear, I'm not gonna be as productive. I'm not gonna be as fruitful because the root of fear produces the bitter fruit of lack, limitation, and scarcity. Like begets like. Fear begets more fear. And so that's why it's a no-win scenario. It's lose-lose. Every aspect of that equation is lose-lose. It's lose for you. It's lose for me. It's lose for all involved. No one wins when we're living in fear, except perhaps the current of average, the enemy that wants to keep us playing safe and playing small, that current of average that wants to seek, kill, and destroy, that current of average that wants us to be mediocre at best, that wants us to just stick our, pay, our tail between our legs, admit defeat and failure, and settle for a second best life. Let other people settle, but not you, not me. Let other people live small lives, but not you, not me. Let other people be towed around by the nose by fear, but not you, not me. We're called to live a life of faith, not fear. We're called to live a life on purpose, with purpose, not have fear tow us around by the nose and being a slave to fear. Not now, not ever. We were not born to be slaves of fear. We were born to be people of faith, to be living life on purpose, with purpose, in prosperity, so we can be a difference maker, to be lights in the darkness, to be beacons of light in the darkness, and to be liberators, to live in the light to live in love because light and love always liberates. Light and love always casts out the darkness. When you own that identity, there is no place for fear. It's called abiding in faith. So that's the first way that fear holds us back is that it only cares about surviving, not thriving. And as long as we let fear rule us, we're never going to break through the shackles of I can't afford a prison, let alone step into true prosperity, let alone step into our true purpose. Let's get into the second one, shall we? 
The second way that fear holds us back from achieving our dreams is that fear steals our power, our peace, and ultimately our prosperity. It steals it because it corrodes with that which we need to step into prosperity, which is our resourcefulness. Our resourcefulness is inextricably linked with our peace, equanimity, serenity, poise. So when we lose that peace and that poise, we lose our productivity. Have you noticed? When, you're, when we're stressed out, we're not nearly as productive as when we're in this serene, peaceful, powerful, poised state of resourcefulness. When we're in peace, when we're in serenity, we're just resourceful. We get shiznit done. We make things happen. And it's like magic happens, right? We're not white knuckling. We're not grinding. We're not stressing or striving. We just flow. We're in the flow state. Those of you who have been in athletics, you know what I'm talking about. When you're in that flow state, it's like, man, you're just making things happen, right? When you're in the flow state playing basketball, it's like you can't miss. It's just one after the other, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. You're just in the flow, right? When you're in flow and you're playing golf, I've never had this experience, but my wife got a hole in one on the second hole of her ex entire golfing career. And I'm like, honey, take a deep breath, just relax, visualize yourself hitting that ball exactly where you want it, right at the hole. Just relax and keep your eye on that ball and visualize it going exactly where you want it. Well, sure enough, she whacked that thing straight on the money and she just sent it sailing straight towards the hole. It hits the ground and she says, I think I got that in the hole. I was like, I, it was definitely a, a great hit, but I don't think you got in the hole, sweetheart. But it was a really great hit. Awesome work. She's like, no, I think I got it in the hole. I, like, I doubt it, but it was a really great hit, sweetheart. She's like, seriously, I think I got it in the hole. We're like, we'll see. We walk over there. Sure enough, she got it in the hole. Can you believe that? It was like 128 yards. It was a par three, 128 yards. Her second hole she'd ever played golf on, and she got a hole in one. You know what I call that? In the flow. That was like a divine download. So I told her, I was like, so what is the moral of the story, sweetheart? She's like, I need to play more golf. I'm like, no, that's not the moral of the story, sweetheart. You need to listen to your hubby more often. <laughs> Just ask Coach D. I'll make sure I call it tight. I'll get you dialing it into the hole in one, sweetheart. Just listen to your hubby more often. Needless to say, she didn't really like that answer. But that is being in the flow. When you're in the flow, things just happen. Doors open, right? Sparks fly, magic happens, right? When you're in the flow, you're in faith. When you're in the flow, you're enjoying the process. When you're in the flow, the destination is savoring the journey. It's not trying to get somewhere. You're not trying to achieve to be happy. You're happily achieving. I'm not successful. I'm not happy because I'm successful. I'm successful because I'm happy, right? It's that flow state that has all a matter of abundance, just unlock and unleash. The avalanche of awesome unlocks and unleashes because we're in the flow. It's that vibration of victory that attracts victory. It's the vibration of abundance that attracts abundance. Like begets like. So living in fear begets more fear, lack, limitation, and scarcity. Because lack, limitation, and scarcity is what is the very essence of fear. Fear is the shadow, but faith is the light. Faith has you abiding in the light. What is light? Light is the essence of love. Light is the essence of living on purpose, with purpose, to serve others, to make a difference, to abide in love. When you're in love, when you're in light, when you're in faith, then you're in flow. Then you're living life animated with the creation. The spirit that created the heavens and the earth animates you because the spirit that created the universe is light and love. And so what is darkness? What is the shadows? It's the absence of light. What is fear? It's the absence of light. When you step into the light of faith and you abide in love, now you're in the flow state. And when you're in the flow state, you're in peace power, poise, and you're in the vibration of prosperity. 
And as you abide in that vibration of prosperity, you attract the people, the occurrences, the circumstances, the situations, the events, the resources, everything you need to see your dream be fulfilled. Just like an acorn, if you whack that acorn with a hammer, you're not going to see an oak tree. You're going to see a bunch of dust on the ground. But you put that acorn in the right conditions, in the soil with the right conditions, the right pH balance, the right water, mineral content, and lo and behold, give it a year, give it 10 years, give it 20 years, it expands into, it unfolds into what it was destined to be, this glorious, magnificent oak tree. Now, the difference between us and an acorn is that an acorn is set, ordained by God to only unfold into an oak tree. It doesn't unfold into a thistle bush. It doesn't unfold into a raspberry bush. It doesn't unfold into, into an apple tree. It's set to unfold into an oak tree. We, on the other hand, we unfold as we think. We unfold as we feel. We unfold based on the vibrational frequency that we give our attention to because we're we give our attention to our energies flow and results show. What we focus on expands. When we focus on fear, we get more fear. When we focus on faith, we get more faith. When we focus on lack, limitation, and scarcity, we get more lack, limitation, and scarcity. When we focus on abundance and joy and peace and love and our dream unfolding and prosperity, guess what? We get more of that. So if you focus on all the shit in your life, guess what? You're going to become a shit magnet. I've been there. I've been in that place where I was just a worry ward worrying about this, worrying about that, and just being riddled with this energy of fear and anxiety, contraction. And lo and behold, I attracted more of the same. I didn't have enough money. I was $124,000 in debt. I didn't see any way out. I was just like freaking out, right? And I had all the reasons to freak out, but how did I get into that dark pit? I got into that dark pit by feeding the fire of fear every day, where you give your attention, where you focus on, you fuel. What you fuel, you feed. What you feed, you expand. You attract more of. So we need to focus on faith versus fear. We need to abide in faith, not fear. And faith is the happy home that begets peace, joy, prosperity, love, all the good stuff. It puts you under the spout where all the good stuff pours out. So the third way that we are held back by fear is that fear keeps us from taking intelligent, inspired action. Fear keeps us from taking intelligent, inspired action. In other words, when we're in fear, we're not taking action. We're in paralysis by analysis. When we're in fear, we're not booking appointments with top producing agents. We're thinking about all the reasons why we can't and why we won't. When we're in fear, we're not building our dream team of rock star partners who we love and adore and they love and adore us. We're thinking about all the reasons why we can't and why we won't. And we're feeling powerless because we're giving our power away because that's what fear does. It has us give up our power away. So fear is inextricably linked with us being in the parking lot, stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on, stuck in first gear, half throttle, just idling, half step and pulling punches. When we are living in fear, we're not going full throttle. When we're living in fear, we're not taking massive action. We're half-assing. We're half-stepping. We're pulling punches. When we're letting fear rule our hearts, we don't go after our dreams with full abandon. We're in self-preservation. And we create stories to reinforce that. We create stories like, it's too hard. It's too difficult. I don't have a plan. You know, my situation is different. My business is different. My market's different. You know, it must be my market. It must be my company. It must be the fact that I don't have X, Y, and Z. These other people, they're kicking ass and taking names and chewing bubble gum. The reason I'm not is because I haven't figured out yet. I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough of that. I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm too old. I'm too young. There's always something. We can tell ourselves a story that has us give our power away. And that's what fear does. And when we give our power away, it 
zaps our batteries so that we don't have the power to take intelligent, inspired action. Instead, we're stuck in the mud and muck, uh, muck and mire of mediocrity, doing the same old thing, getting the same old results. That's no place to be. That's no way to live. So one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is that we get them armed and dangerous so that they have good reason to abide in faith. See, you have to have a good reason to abide in, to, in fear. If you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, there's a good reason to be fearful, right? If you're meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked, there's a good reason to be fearful, especially if you have no roadmap and no GPS, right? And you are not a good Boy Scout or Girl Scout, right? You have a good reason to be in fear. We want to remove all the unhealthy fear. We want to remove the fuel for unhealthy fear. And the fuel for unhealthy fear is having a lackluster strategy, right? Not knowing how to win in this business when you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net. That does not bode well, right? That's a recipe to have skinny kids and a skimpy bank account. We don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. And that means we need to get you armed and dangerous. So if you're listening to this right now, you're a 100% commission mortgage professional in residential uh, mortgages, and you're in a situation where you eat what you kill with no safety net, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being riddled with anxiety or fear. You might even be doing great, but you might be fearful about the fact that you're relying on 50% of your revenue coming from the refi market when you know the writing's on the wall. It's just a matter of not if, but when rates go up. As soon as rates go up, you're caught with your pants down, scrambling to recoup that lost revenue. And you don't want to be in desperation mode, scrambling. You don't want to be in desperation mode, going backwards, going into stagnation, let alone regression. And so if you're worrying where that next deal is going to come from, if you're worrying about the fact that rates are going up and you're concerned about your business going backwards, if you're worrying because you don't have a battle-tested proven method to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive and you're sick and tired of doing it the hard way, cold calling, or you just won't do cold calling. So now you have your wings tied because there's nothing else really to do except for buy a bunch of shit leads off the internet that don't convert. That's not a very viable option. That's definitely doing it the hard way. Right. So if you're in this place where you want to grow, you want to expand, you want to take your business, your life, your prosperity to the next level, but you don't have a proven plan and that's causing you anxiety, uncertainty, doubt, worry, sleepless nights, overwhelm, anything like that. And you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being in a prison of fear around that, then I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call with either myself or one of my consultants. We will lift up the hood on your business and just have a real talk on honest conversation about where you're at now, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working. And we can if we can help you bridge that gap between where you are and where you are, where you want to be, we'll show you what that looks like inside of Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com and our proven system. If not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you will leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun as well. Unless you're really boring, then we won't. <laughs> but if you're a cool cat like I think you are, chances are we're going to have some fun. If that sounds fair to you, I invite you to book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. So there you go. I've just highlighted the three ways that fear holds mortgage professionals back from achieving their dreams and how to avoid it. We covered number one, that fear only cares about surviving, not thriving. We covered number two, that fear steals our power, our peace, and ultimately our prosperity. It's time to let go of fear and to step into faith. It's time to go after your dreams with abandon. It's time to get yourself equipped with a proven plan and system and structure and support you need to launch out of the cannon like a rocket and to propel yourself to new heights and to start making freedom money, abundance money, doing what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want money, living life on your terms. And if you're sick and tired of living in I can't afford it prison and you're ready to start making freedom money, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's all we got for today, friends. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. It's been a blessing to serve you today. If you like this, dig this, want more of this, I invite you to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, any other uh, podcast outlets that you want, might want to utilize. 
Please give us a five-star review. If you dig this, we'd love to hear your five-star reviews as well. Get the message out and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.